In House of the Dragon Season 3, Kristen Cole, one of the primary leaders of the Greens during the Dance of the Dragons, will meet his end when he faces Craig and Stark's Winter Wolves and Rivermen. Sarah Kristen Cole, also known as the Kingmaker, is a Knight of House Cole, Lord Commander of the King's Guard, and Hand of the King under Aegon II Targaryen. Kristen is on the march towards Harrenhal, the biggest castle in Westeros, which is under Demon's control and where Demon has gathered a huge army of rivermen for Queen Renera. As Eamon said himself, when the time is right, he will join Kristen, and together they will take Harrenhal back from Demon. The Greens have two armies marching into the Rivalents, one led by Kristen and the other by Jason Lannister. While Lord Jason Lannister marches toward the gods' eye with a host of Westermen, Kristen is also marching towards it with another 4,000 Greens. In Season 3, Eamon will join them on Vagar. Jason Lannister's forces will not be of much help to Kristen, as the Lannister army will be destroyed in a battle against Cregan Stark's Winter Wolves, who will join forces with the Rivermen. There were supposed to be two battles in which the Lannisters fight, but Season 3 will combine two battles into one. The battle by the lakeshore and the battle at the Red Fork, in which Lord Jason will be killed and his Lannister forces destroyed. The battle at the Red Fork is a battle at a crossing of the Red Fork in the Western Riverlands. The Westermen meet the outnumbered rivermen at a crossing of the Red Fork. The rivermen throw back three attempts by the Greens to cross the river, with Lord Jason Lannister being slain in the third attack by a squire, Pate of Longleaf, who earns the nickname the Lion's Lair. Command of the Lannister host is assumed by Sir Adrian Tarbeck. Adrian and a hundred knights rid themselves of their heavy armor, swim the Red Fork upstream of the fighting, and surprise Lord Tristan Vance's men from the back. The Riverman's resistance collapses after Adrian slays Tristan, allowing the remaining Westermen to cross the Red Fork. The Lannister host continues east into the Riverlands, but they are eventually crushed in the battle by the lakeshore by Craig and Stark's Winter Wolves. 2,000 grizzled Stark Greybeards, who wear old male and ragged skins, ride shaggy northern horses and wheeled axes, mauls, spiked maces, and ancient iron swords, arrive at the twins in the season 2 finale, where they meet the phrase. In the book, during this meeting, the Winter Wolves leader gives a chilling line to the phrase, stating, We have come to die for the Dragon Queen. In season 3, the Stark army will march with Forest Fry and Red Rob Rivers to the God's Eye, where they join other rivermen to oppose a host of Lannisters and Westermen. The Winter Wolves will beg the honor of leading the attack in the ensuing battle by the lakeshore, charging five times at the Lannister spearmen. Two-thirds of the Northmen will be killed or wounded in the fighting, which is a decisive victory for the Blacks. The battle by the lakeshore, called the Fish Feed by its participants, is the bloodiest land battle of the entire war. When the Lannisters and the Westermen reach the western shore of the God's Eye, they discover that they are opposed by Craig and Stark with 2,000 Winter Wolves, all of them mounted, Lord Forrest Fry with 200 knights and 600 infantrymen, and Rob Rivers with 300 archers from Raventree Hall. Before we continue with this battle, it's important to mention that while this is happening, Harrenhal has already fallen to Kristen Cole and Eamond. Early in Season 3, after defeating Ser Oswald Wode and Lords Derry and Root by the shores of the God's Eye, Kristen's host will find Harrenhal abandoned by Demon when they finally arrive at the castle. Eamon sees it as a great victory, but is outraged upon learning that while he was flying to Harrenhal to challenge Demon and destroy him, his dragons, and his army, Demon had flown away on car axes to aid Renera with the fall of King's Landing. This was exactly what Demon had hoped for to lure Eamon away from King's Landing, leaving only a skeleton defense force behind. Enough that a smaller force from Dragonstone and Driftmark could quickly seize the capital using dragons and the Valerion fleet. Combined with the betrayal of the City Watch, who remain loyal to Demon, early in Season 3 the city will fall within a single day with little fighting. Meanwhile, Demon's army at Harrenhal does not simply wait for Kristen and Eamon to arrive, but abandons Harrenhal to attack the Lannister army in the west. They succeed in annihilating the entire Lannister host in the battle by the lakeshore, although with heavy losses. The Lannisters take up a defensive position with their backs to the lakeshore, sending ravens to nearby Harrenhal to seek assistance from Kristen, but more importantly from Prince Eamon and his dragon, Vagar. 
However, each one of the ravens carrying a message is shot down by arrows. Northmen and rivermen decide to attack the Lannisters before their letters can reach Eamond and Vagar. Cregan and the Winter Wolves will lead the attack, their cavalry charging the Lannister spearmen but suffering heavy losses. Attacked by the Blacks from three sides, the Lannister soldiers are gradually forced back into the God's Eye Lake, and the battle is ultimately the bloodiest land battle of the entire war. The Lannisters' main army will be totally destroyed in the battle. With few forces left to defend their home territory, Dalton Greyjoy will opportunistically ally with Rhaenyra so the Ironborn can plunder the coasts of the Westerlands, sacking Lannisport but failing to take Casterly Rock itself. Jason's widow, Lady Johanna Lannister, will close the gates of Casterly Rock but will be unable to prevent the Ironborn from sacking Lannisport and raiding the coast. In response to the Black's victories, Kristen will urge Eamon to retreat south and join the host of Greens led by Lord Ormond Hightower and Prince Daron Targaryen. Eamon refuses, however, and decides to instead burn the Rivolins with Vagar's dragon flame, parting ways with Cole and leaving him vulnerable and unprotected from the sky. Kristen will march south from Harrenhal with his remaining host of 3,600 Greens to join the Hightower host, traveling along the western shore of the God's Eye. Kristen's enemies, the River Lords, will practice scorched earth tactics, burning their own forests and villages to deny Kristen and his army supplies. The Blacks will also use guerrilla warfare against the Greens, and with each passing day, more of Kristen's hosts will desert or join the Blacks. On one occasion, Kristen's army will come across a grisly display of feasting corpses, the bodies of men who had fallen at the battle by the lakeshore. Later, at the village of Crossed Elms, Kristen's forces will be attacked by Blacks disguised as corpses, losing 12 men before realizing Black Trombo's ambush. While marching from the God's Eye to the Blackwater Rush, Kristen's weakened host is met at a ridge by an army of thousands of soldiers loyal to Renera and outnumbered two to one, composed of Craig and Stark's Winter Wolves and Rivermen, led by Sir Garibald Grey, Sir Pate of Longleaf, and Lord Roderick Dustin. Kristen will hold a parley with the three leaders. Kristen offers to surrender if they promise to spare the lives of his men, but he is refused. Kristen will say, If I strike my banners, do you promise us our lives? Garibald will respond with, I made my promise to the dead. I told them I would build a sep for them out of traitor's bones. I don't have near enough bones yet, so, Kristen then says, If there is to be battle here, many of your own will die as well. To which Roderick Dustin, leader of the Stark's Winter Wolves, says, That's why we come. Winter's here. Time for us to go. No better way to die than sword in hand. Kristen then finally says, As you will it. We can begin here, the four of us. One of me against the three of you. Will that be enough to make a fight of it? Pate responds with, I'll want three more. I'll have no songs about how brave you died, Kingmaker. There's tens of thousands dead on your account. One of the leaders, Pate the Lion's Lair, denies Kristen the fight and instead orders Rob Rivers and his archers to strike down Kristen, the Kingmaker, with arrows. When Kristen dies, the Winter Wolves will sound the charge of the Black's vanguard, which consists of Stark soldiers and the River Knights. The Greens quickly collapse. Hundreds of Kristen's men are then killed by the Rivermen and Winter Wolves in the ensuing Butcher's Ball. Kristen's head will then be brought on a spear to the first battle of Tumbleton. House of the Dragon season, three will see Kristen taking empty Harrenhal, parting ways with Eamon upon their disagreement, and then marching south in hopes of joining the High Tower host that is accompanied by Prince Daron Targaryen and his dragon Tessarion. On his way there, however, at the very end of season three, Kristen and his army will be ambushed by Stark's army joined by Rivermen, and Kristen will die. Let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments section down below. For free, you can now listen to the entire audiobook Fire and Blood, on which House of the Dragon is based, and which covers the entire Targaryen history, including current and future events of House of the Dragon, for free with an audible trial using our link in the description. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next one.